Happy New Year. Make Prism Gods. How about that? What's up? What's up? What's up? Happy New Year, guys. Excited. All right. So, episode 11. I was going to say that. How you beat me to it? I'm supposed to narrate. Go ahead. All right, man. That's cool. Look, check this out, everybody. This is episode 11. Did you think we was going to make it this far? Nah. Hey, but I love it. And I'm getting I'm getting better and better. Hey, my connection isn't as choppy. My voice oh, isn't man. as choppy. Oh, Everything's man. Getting better. He's on fire this time. Hey, look, after a while, shout out to the people that are watching and the people who are listening to the channel. I know on your way to work or just on a Sunday evening, sipping some nice Kool-Aid or lemonade, you're enjoying yourself by you listening to my seductive voice. <laughs> And if they hop on YouTube, they can see your seductive face, man. Hey, man, hey. what's up with the hat? You don't wear hats? Hey, man, look, I'm representing my guys, my sneakerheads out there, addicted to anything that are fresh. It's an ATL thing. And shout out to my Jordans that just came in the mail today. These things are fire. Fire, fire, fire. I'll probably never wear them, but I'll probably showcase them here. In the, and once I finally fix up my room back here, but that's just my thing, you know? That's just my thing. Okay. Yeah, so. Right? Yeah, no, these are 11s. 11. You, you got to know these 11s, brother. It's 11s. Yeah, it's all right, man. I like 12s and 13s. I like golf balls. All right. <laughs> all right, so look, we got a very special guest. I met this guy about a month ago. Um, he's a retired baseball player. His name is Christian Benford. You ever heard of that guy? I don't, man, but I know what it takes to get to the league, man. So if he got there, kudos to him. Hey, that's my that's my whole point. I had a cousin who played uh, for the Saints. He played about three or four games. I uh, got a major injury. But at the end of the day, man, we know we have no clue what it takes to get to that next level on a professional level. We have no clue what these guys deal with. But the cool thing is we got Christian in the building. He's going to talk to us about what it's like to be an athlete and be a sports car collector. What do y'all think of that? Amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Hey, I'm looking forward to it, man. I got some interesting questions to ask him. Uh, hey. you, know, my, you know, my son plays baseball, man, and he's a little early on. So, you know, any tips and pointers? I'm going to see if I can steal a couple of snags from, away from him. Hey, well, you know what? We're going to bring Christian in, and Christian's definitely going to talk to us about his experience and the hobby and what it was like being an athlete in a hobby. So today's episode, again, is about athletes in the sports car industry. So without further ado, we bring in my boy Christian. What's up, Christian? Hey, Christian. How's it going, guys? How's it going? Nice to see everybody. Everybody give my boy a welcome for the virtual hands that are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Virtual hands out here for my guy, Christian Benford, in the building. Welcome to the channel, brother. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you guys, too. Happy I didn't get my water. 11. <laughs> you see, you're choking them up already. We haven't even started. <laughs> Man, look. I'm not going to even lie to you. Like I, I was, I usually have my water on the side. I was going to tell you, Christian, you got to have some water when you're on the show because you talk for like a good 30, 40 minutes, and then we ask questions, and then fans get on and they talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I just got no, choked up. You, no, you talk for 30 or 40 minutes. We only talk for five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? You're right. You're right. I, I definitely, I, I definitely take the. Take the cake. All right. So, Christian, I would like, uh, why don't you give everybody a breakdown? Tell people who you are, um, how you got in industry, and where it all started. So, I was uh, lucky enough to be drafted out of high school. Um, I went to a small boarding school in Pennsylvania. Um, and then I was drafted by the Royals in 2011, played for them for seven years, uh, signed with the Orioles, and then I got traded to the Tigers to finish up uh, my affiliated career. And then I played a, a year with an independent league team in Kansas City called the Kansas City T-Bones. Uh, oh, you, you probably played with a buddy of mine. How long ago did you play with the T-Bones? Uh, not last summer, but the summer before. Is that the one where they won the, the World Series or the championship in that league? No, it was um, it was the year after that. Okay. Yeah, because a buddy of mine, he, probably been, he was with there with you. His name's Tommy. Tommy Collier. Oh, yeah. Tommy. I Man, that dude's awesome. <laughs> Another so, time, man. Yeah, yeah. We're good, good buddies. Nice, nice. So tell us about your experience. And, I mean, walk us through this process because I've never been drafted before in baseball. And I just kind of want to know what it's like and let the people out here know what it's like to kind of go through that prospecting. Because you say you were recruited in high school, right? 
Yeah. So I actually, I had Tommy John surgery when I was 16 um, in my sophomore year of high school. So um, I went down with that and I'll tell you what, man, my first year into in high school, I was just a fat chubby kid who was kind of tall and could throw hard. And I had no idea what my future was. And then I came back from surgery and um, I just hit a growth spurt, started working out. And, um, you know, I, I topped out at 95 in high school and um, things kind of just spiraled from there. So um, once I, I signed to go to University of Virginia um, out of college or out of high school and decided that uh, um, the opportunity to play pro ball was just um, a little bit better. <laughs> so, um, but it was, it, it's, it was a phenomenal, the Royals, I'll tell you what, anybody who I ever played with coming from a different organization, um, anybody who I've ever met, the Royals are a first class organization and nice. they, they, I just don't have enough good things to say about them. So I'm a White Sox fan, so I can't say I like the Royals, but just saying. <laughs> I'm, a National, hey, I'm a Nationals fan, so I don't know. They knocked them out of the playoffs, man. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I'm just messing with you, man. Go ahead, go ahead, and continue. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it, it's just they're freaking awesome, and um, and then the Orioles and uh, and the Tigers. It was just a short stint, so I, you know I, I never really got to meet, you get to really know everybody. I mean, they're great people and stuff. Had great teammates, but um, but yeah, and then um, you know with with card collecting, um, mm. I mean, I started collecting cards when I was. 10 12 going to the uh local antique store where they had a couple of people who've had booths and would put put together those quarter packs and they put the best cards on the front and the back so that you'd buy them and then the rest were crap <laughs> <laughs> right that's, that's literally how it started and then it it just graduated to buying jersey cards and then buying an autograph and then selling hey, that, that became a big company it's called panini <laughs> they out of, out of your flea market. <laughs> so, 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 question. So, when you were younger, did you actually think? Did you did you feel like you were going to make it to the to the majors? How did how did show. you feel yeah. to the big show? show. So, what you so I will say, I will say, I never made it to the major leagues. Um, but I was in AAA for three years, and I got I was fortunate to play in the futures game, which was awesome. I played with uh, with Syndergaard, Seager um renfro those guys it was an unreal experience um that's nice man so i was i was knocking on the door but um you know actually the closest i got was 2014 that was the year i played in the futures game and everything and um brandon finnegan we had just signed him he had just gotten out of the college world series he was a lefty throwing 95 reliever whatever and um the royals that was the year that they went to the playoffs and won the alcs um, yeah so it was between me and Finnegan to get called up that I later found out. Um, mm. But they needed a lefty instead of a righty. That's literally how wow. it, how it got down to that. So, um, and at the time, like I, I was a starter and I, I was built for long relief. So he was he was the minute we signed him, he was a one inning guy, blow it out kind of thing, and and pump mm -hmm. it up. So I just wasn't built for that. So it was probably a better thing anyway. I would have loved to be up there, but. Right. Who knows? Well, you know, still kudos to you, man, no, no matter what. So I guess we had a conversation when I first met you and you talked to me about what it was like being a sports car collector while being an athlete. Like walk me through that process of what it's like when you do you buy your favorite. <laughs> so when you're playing for Kansas City, are you who are you like? Are you buying your teammates? Like, how's that like? That was the, that was the one line that I, I drew in the sand. I, I never bought teammates and um i tried not to buy like people that i was playing against so like if they got called up and you know to double a and they were in and high then i can't really help that but um i because i just didn't want it to blur the line like at all no kind of thought crossing my mind but um you know i, I when i started out i met one guy who kind of I kind of followed. I I started to ask a lot of questions with, and I think that that when you get into the hobby, if you go in blind, it'll it'll kind of eat you <laughs> up a little bit. Man. You, you make one or two big mistakes on a card, and you lose yes. your butt. I mean, you're you're kind of get shy away from it. So, um, 
I was lucky enough to, to get a good, a good uh, mentor, I guess you could say. And um, it's my collection just grew based on that. Nice, nice, nice. So I don't know, man, like I, I'm seeing like, did you see the uh, interview recently? I know this is kind of, we're switching sports a little, little gears a little bit. I know it, going from you to what's going on in the industry. Like we talked about it a couple episodes ago where LeBron James is buying his own personal card. So you're going from, it's like, do you think that's like inside betting? Is like, is that what that is? I mean, technically. Inside trading. Inside trading. It's, it's a, a smart trading. bet. It's, it's a damn smart bet. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. <laughs> no, I, so I I actually have my entire rainbow. I have everything oh, that's from, awesome. nice. from the super Very tractor nice. all the way down the line. So uh, that was that was pretty cool. That would be something that I'll hand down to my kids someday. Now it's not worth what a uh, LeBron super fractor. Uh, <laughs> you know? the, the trout, the trout yeah. super fractor, huh? Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so 11, 11, If you got drafted in eleven, that was Lindor, right? Lindor draft. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, Jackie Bradley. Is that everybody? Is that same? That's Jackie Bradley. I think I was buying then. Right before, was that? Right before Trout. That was when I was buying baseball. I was buying baseball then. I'm sure I, I had Bryce, your card. Bryce, Hyper, uh, Bryce Harper was that draft Bryce too, Harper? right? Yeah, Bryce Harper was in that because uh, uh, Mike Trout was uh, You don't remember your draft? <laughs> no. I, was so late. Late. I, didn't, I wasn't worried about who was drafted in front of me. I, I really don't remember. That's kind of rough to say, I guess. But <laughs> so, so, so then I guess that's my question: Is you got into the card industry? Were you still playing baseball when you started in the hobby? Well, like yeah. more deeper, right? Because we all started as kids, but then we get a little more serious when you get a little bit of coin in our pocket. Yep, that's, that's exactly how it started to escalate a little bit when I was able to splurge and and uh, kind of go for the higher dollar cards. But um, it was funny though, because I, you know. I'd come into the clubhouse every day and when you get mail, the clubbies in the clubhouse, they'd put the mail on your chair. And mm -hmm. so, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of the big name guys would get stacks of mail because they wanted people sending cards to sign, whatever. And, mm -hmm. um, but my <laughs> chair had a ton of bubble mailers. Oh, wow. <laughs> they were just stacked. <laughs> and all of my teammates were like, dude, people send you so much crap. And I'm like, Nah, this I bought this stuff and, and it was funny because they, they were like, Why are you buying baseball cards? Like, isn't that aren't those like quarter cards, like worth quarters and like are worth nothing? And so I started like educating them a little bit. And yeah. I actually I, I converted a couple of them, man. They they started to uh, <laughs> buy, they wanted to know who to buy and everything. It was kind of cool. Like that's so did you uh, do you buy you the sport or what what sport were you buying? I stayed 100% in baseball. I, I knew okay. nothing about basketball. I knew nothing about football. I, I mean, I've watched it a little bit, but I didn't really know anything about it. And then, and I was, I was purely a collector. Like I only sold something if I wanted to buy something else. Like it wasn't to mm -hmm. make money. It was solely collecting. And nice. I even told the, the guy who helped me out with everything. I told him I will never be a car dealer. That's not going to ever happen. <laughs> I will not do it. Like, that's just that's not who I am. Blah blah. blah. Well, right. Two years later, I've I have literally every sport, probably more basketball than I do baseball. There you go. Yeah, that's why I met him at. He sold me some cards, y'all. Don't let him trick. Don't let him fool you. <laughs> oh man, we gotta have another Trey Young story. Come on, no, no, he didn't sell me the Trey Young. He sold me bowl bowl, some bowl bowl stuff, uh, some some uh, Brandon Ingram stuff like that. So yeah, Brandon that, Ingram that, was a good buy. Hey, I give hey. him a lot of time about the Hawks <laughs> yep. and Trey Young, man. Every every show, I gotta give it to him, man, because you know he's beat he beats me up in my inbox all the time. Hey, did you see that play that Trey Young made? Hey, did you see that pass? Did you see that shot? Did you see who they beat? I'm like, man, I'm tired of hearing about the darn Hawks well, already. We'll we'll be talking about the pre the playoff predictions and the final predictions once we get towards the playoffs and we see how well the Hawks and everything done. But Christian, I want to know when you first got your when you first start making that big money, right? Yeah. What was the first card that you bought? What was the what was the most expensive card that you bought when you first got in? You, you took my words out of my brain, man. Get out of my <laughs> hey, head. Yeah. There you go. Now the the first big card that I bought. Um, so I got another pretty kind of interesting story for you. Um, <laughs> All right. The the first big card that I bought was a um, it was like a handful. Like I I never I was I was kind of gun shy. I, I didn't want to spend more than like five hundred bucks on a card because I I thought you know like the upside wasn't there. And at the time 
cards didn't really go up or down really all that fast. It was just, you had to buy right. And now it's completely different game. But, um, so I, I, I actually bought a, a 2012 and I still have it, a Mike Trout Sterling purple nine, five, 10. It was the year that they numbered it out of 10. Um, so I still have that. And I bought that for like 700 bucks, something like that. Something crazy. Just a little bit more. Oh, you know, like a little bit. So <laughs> yeah. I was happy about that. But, um, but yeah, so kind of a cool story. So I bought an Ernie Banks bat knob card and it was a booklet, um, a heritage booklet, whatever. And so I posted it on, on one of the first Facebook groups I ever was on and I get a message from a guy and he was like, Hey, I have a different Ernie knobs bat knob card or Ernie Banks bat knob card. And mm-hmm. would you want to trade? I just like the heritage better. And I was like, this is not like, why, like, why would you want that? <laughs> and, and then I started looking into what, who he was. Well, it was Brad Ziegler. And oh, so he messaged wow. me, well, this was when I was in uh, big league spring training with the Royals. Well, it just so happened that in two weeks we were playing his team at their place. So he was like, bro, just bring it and we'll meet on the warning track and we'll do, <laughs> we'll do a trade. So, do a trade on the warning track. That's funny. Yeah. So once I found out who he was and like, I, I kind of figured he wanted it for like, cause he had heritage cards or whatever. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I want yours in $400. And he was like, it's the same card. I was like, <laughs> if you want mine, you're going to give me 400 bucks too. And he, I don't think he could type yes fast enough. I don't know why he wanted it so damn bad, but he did. So wow. we traded on the warning track pregame and just the, it was the most, I don't know. It was very odd because we both had like <laughs> plastic bags and we just handed it off. Like, was that your first and, deal? That was your that, first deal. That was one of that was the first like sale, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of weird. That's funny, man. That's dope. That's so who's dope. uh who's one of the guys that I mean, like you said, you you did nothing but baseball. So who was the guy that you hit the home run with? I mean, I I got a bunch of trout stuff back in the day. Okay. So, you know, I, I have the like a couple blue Bowman Chrome nine fives and um I had three green finest autos. 2011 um and it just i just kept them all i just kind of forgot i had them and um i've sold a couple of them since then but um that was that was pretty nice to see those prices kind of skyrocket a little bit yeah mm. we have those me and Raphael have those talks all the time like man what about what about those cards that if we didn't have to sell them like what would we have today you know yeah. and that's great you know to hear first first perspective of yep. having cards that you're in it because you're collecting. We we talk all the time about knowing your lane and not overextending yourself. And obviously, these are the fruits of that labor. And some of the cards that I have in my PC that I'll never sell are not even close to the most expensive ones. Yeah. Like, I, mm. I literally just bought a five-star, this is today, I bought a five-star dual jersey of Willie Mays and Griffey. And it was numbered out of 10, paid 100 bucks for it. I'm like... You can't, yeah. those are, those are sick cards. They're older cards. They're like 15 years old, you know, and they just look so cool and you don't see them every day. Man, so that's, so like my Yuli. that's like my Yuli collection, man. Hey, it's, it's not worth as much as I would like it to be, but it's the price is to me. Yeah, that's right, man. That's dope, man. To be able to still be a collector. Cause we always talk about reseller versus collectors and even, you know, and, and it's still dope to be able to have somebody on the show who actually is really a collector. You know, I don't think I don't I don't you know, I know you're selling. Yeah. Uh, do you consider yourself full-time sales sales or like you just like is it, you totally crossed over to selling or wh- wh- where are you at? You know, I there are cards that I 100% buy. I'm not keeping them. There are for resale period. Mhm. Um, so young. <laughs> it's getting to that point, I'll tell you what. <laughs> But, um, I, I sold one today. <laughs> which one did you sell? The tie dye. Tie dye. Tie dye. I sold a yeah. tie. Hey, what's up? What's up, uh, Anthony Hockey four hundred four? We got some fan. We got some people here in our chat. Uh, see, Justin Driver. He got a good laugh off of something we said earlier. I meant to. I meant to post that earlier. But yeah, what's up, Anthony Hockey ten fourteen? What's going on, guys? And if you guys have any questions while you guys are viewing, uh, feel free to ask us any questions, ask Christian some questions. We are here for you guys. Um, 
this is you know we like to think of the show as being an educational for educational purposes we're not just talking and rambling uh we are but we are <laughs> but we're trying to educate as well so uh just feel free to uh you know just feel free to uh you know ask away i do have a question for you christian so now because of all the shortened seasons right we don't have real off seasons anymore but i've already seen a trend an uptick in baseball market right so with, with that being said are you starting to buy and if so i mean prospects or you know known commodities i bought a, bu a bunch of acuna stuff okay I, you know it's for, pretty low yeah mm -hmm. man, he's stupid low i i bought 15 of his uh chrome tops chrome rookie psa 10s mm -hmm. they were down to like 95 dollars yeah they're dirt cheap and now they're Dude's a stud and um the update psa 10s they were down to like 120 130 yep now they're up to 190 so so acuna is a buy for the record is what, it, what you're telling us acuna yeah. is a more buy acuna, more acuna than tatis i so i was pretty much set on tatis stuff i i got lucky on him i okay i bought a bunch of his stuff raw a couple of years ago and graded it all and like what what i try to do like if i get into a card and like raw Grade it comes out well, whatever. And I'm there's a big gap where you know I may sp spend a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, but now it's worth a thousand, two thousand, whatever. Like I try to, I, I, I may be against the conventional wisdom, but I hold those because I'm like, if it goes down, I'm still up, so it's really mm -hmm. not that big of a deal. But if I buy a card after a year and it's the same price, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna unload that so I can try to get into something else, like, yeah, so. I th and then my inventory just grows and that's just how it kind of works, I guess. But um, if I'm in like if I'm in a card really good, it's hard for me to sell it because I think, well, then I can just give a really good deal to somebody. But I leave a, I leave, a, you know, a ton of money on the table, but I already made my money. Like, I don't know. It's just I don't want to think about that. So I just don't sell. Them. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the circle of life mentality there, man. But that's a different perspective to look at it. Right. Um, because I mean, we were looking at uh, Kobe during the pandemic, and he shot up like a rocket. His top cards were doing like fifty two hundred, I think, at this high point. Yeah, and yep. now you can pick him up for twelve hundred to fifteen hundred bucks right now. You know, those not anymore. A little bit too. Those are not anymore. PSA ten just hit four K. Okay, well they're heading back up. Yeah, After not, it, it went up, a PSA ten tops Chrome did. What was it 20k last week? Tops are back to 4k. Just that quick. There you go. Yep. I well, missed out. They're, getting, they're gearing up for the ceremony. I believe it. In March. Yeah. So yep. Acuna, who else? You you buy pitchers or or you still you stick to utility players? Screw pitchers. Can't Said no pitchers. Thing. So pitchers, though, I am finding out if you throw hundred, it doesn't matter if you're a relief pitcher. Or if you're a starter, it doesn't matter. If you throw 100, buy him. Because, like, th that guy for uh, Garrett Crochet or whatever his name is, Crotchet, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, the dude's a relief. The dude throws maybe, you know, a handful of times and then is done. But mm -hmm. his cards now will go for, what, $100 graded? Wow. Like, or, like, the refractors are, like, over 50, 60 bucks. The dude's a reliever. But he yeah, throws 104, so he, it's cool headline, but. Anyway, so yeah, so I uh, there's a local guy here that I started buying up, um, and I actually made some money off of him. His name is uh, Simeon Woods Richardson. Uh, he got drafted by the, the the Mets, and now he's with uh, Toronto now. Uh, okay. So really good local guy, and yeah, he's the same way. I mean, he threw 98 in high school, and I think he he hit the hundred uh, when he got to the to the Blue Jays. And same thing, man. He has a he has a small little following here in Houston. And people buy them up. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, all right. So look, I, I'm I'm gonna get you guys to go back, but we, I'm trying to answer some of the questions. We got a lot of people asking questions right now. So Bradley H says, "How do you guys keep up, keep track of all your cards?" I am swimming in cards and waste hours looking for a single card. Is there a platform or app that is good to use? Uh, Excel sheet. That's yeah, basically there is. <laughs> 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 and I, I, and, but you and, know what? <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you something though. I mean, I have an Excel sheet, right? Because I do grading. I, don't even use uh, it. I do grading, and I have I have all my subs that are out of PSA on the spreadsheet. 
But you know what? Uh, I don't know if I want to be really, really organized in regards to those cards because I actually like going back through them because then you yeah. find dips, right? I was going back the other day and I was looking for, I think, uh, Keldon Johnson and I came out with a big old stack of Darius Garland. So, I mean, uh-huh. for me, it's like you almost forget about them, but then when the hype yep. starts going in, you start looking them, you can pull out a whole stack of stuff. So, I mean, that's what yeah. I actually enjoy that. Yeah, I like 40 DeAndre Hunters. He's going up now. I'm happy. I'm going to send him your way. <laughs> All right, so Justin Driver said PSA 10 Kobe's are at 4K and PSA 9's are at $400. And you know what that sounds like, Justin Driver, to me? There's an area opportunity there. Buy them at 400 bucks. The PSA 9's, I think those are good buys at $400, especially if the gap is that big. And They were what? I think PSA 9's were $1,000 or what was it? 1500 Yeah, I know. Hey, you're going to buy this You're gonna buy this hunter from me? No. Out of ten, I don't care. That's your favorite player, man. Your favorite team in the whole wide world. No, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. Okay, don't get it twisted. For the record, I'm a Bulls fan. I live in Atlanta, right? And I like Trey Young, and I like the or I like I like what they I like what the Atlanta Hawks did with their team. Uh, just Christian, honest, I don't know if you I, I don't know if you tuned into the NFL uh, the NBA preview show. But he put high, the, the Bulls six in the wet in the East. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's still early. You see how close you see how you see it, like literally every team in the East from the third seed to the eighth seed is literally like a game away from being in the third place. I don't think I'm wrong. Milwaukee Bucks are at the bottom. They're like seventh or eighth. Yeah, Isn't that insane? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's, it's too early. I think, and I think also the East is getting be- better for the record. I think people for a long time have down the East, and we're talking about basketball, guys, not baseball. Um, it's the East basketball is getting a lot better. It's more competitive with KD coming back. I think we're going to get to see for the next couple of years uh, the rivalry that we used to have with KD and LeBron is going to come back, and we're going to see these guys in the finals. I'm still, I'm still putting that as my bet, just saying. So it's two weeks in. Are we crowning? Are we crowning playoff locks or, or not yet? Because <laughs> I'm going to crown. Great. I, I mean, honestly, I think the I'm 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 nowhere backpedaling a little bit. But you asked the question, I'm going to answer it. So I'm going to say that the Hawks can compete with anybody in the East, especially with Spencer Dunwoody not being uh, healthy. I think he's out for a while. If they lose him for the year, I'm not sure if they lost him for the year. I can't remember. Um, but them losing yeah, the them for you, I think he's I think definitely – Yeah, so there you go. I think that makes them – the Atlanta Hawks bench is crazy. You haven't even seen Rondo, Chris Dunn yet. We haven't seen Gallinari in a couple games yet. So we're going to see a lot of – hey, man, I know what I'm talking about. I watched him. Hey, <laughs> hey, look. This way. Hey, he always finds a way, a way to plug in them Hawks, man. He's trying to tell them to trade young cards. <laughs> hey, they don't need any help. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Love your posterity, Kobe and Prism. Man, keep it up. Thank you very much, Anthony uh, Hockey1014. That was another question somebody asked. All right, so Huey the Free Man, what cards would you hold from baseball draft class 2020? I have no clue. I haven't followed baseball since 2011 when Christian was drafted. (laughs) There's some some big boys in there, man. There's some big boys in this draft. I mean, I'll let you talk to her. You're the expert, man, but there's some big boys in this draft that I think you can't sleep on. I've heard a lot about Ed Howard. That's that's who. Oh, you said prospects. Yeah, that that guy, Ed Howard, I think is uh, – uh, that's the guy I think who's like the middle of the road right now. Like his cards are, are not cheap by any means, but they're not Torkelson thousands of dollars either, so. Torkelson, what about – what about – when I heard that question, right, and of course you're, you're – you you your bell rung a different way than mine did, but I think it's like like the Roberts and the Kyle Lewis's and the Jordans yep. and the Luxes oh, and okay. the and the Bichette. I mean, any of those guys kind of stand out to you? Bichette, that dude. So I pitched against Bichette, and his bat is insanely fast. That dude <laughs> looks like I I threw him. So th- the reason why I did so well in 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 p- pitching in the upper levels was because of my slider. Like that was, that was my pitch. I felt like I could tell somebody I was going to throw it. And they wouldn't hit it. Like that was my com- confidence in it. That mm. dude, I, if I threw that pitch, it would go like 80, 90% of the way there. 
And I'd be like, oh, I got you. And then out of freaking nowhere, this dude would just slap it down the line for like yeah. a trip. Like, yeah. And I, I think if you look back, I pitched against him in two games. I think he's like probably – five for seven against me <laughs> i just couldn't get him out there was no there was no way and i would always go to, i would always go sinker to the back foot of a righty well he that's where he loved that he loved that that zone and that dude is is a great fielder he never made a mistake i mean he's about as sure hand as you can get so nice. i would say i would say him for sure jordan i think what is the deepest route though oh man i, mean, that, I love jordan I, I i can't even begin to tell you about I'm stacking up on Jordan. I yep. mean, for me, seeing him and his rehab coming back, to me, it's the most promise. I mean, in this first at bat back from the knee stuff, he hits a home run. The next game, he hits a home run. He hits a triple. And then, of course, he, he gets, you know, a little limber with that knee and have to shut him down. But, oh, man, that guy right there, to me, he's he's a diff- he's on a different playing field, man. If the dude hits like 110, 120 off the, off the bat, then – I mean, how can you argue with that? Yeah, it's a different yep. – that's just – for those guys you hear batting practice, it's just a different sound. It's like, I man, mean, have you had any crazy head. any crazy comebackers at you? Luckily, you know, I never did. I really never did. I I um, I had a couple kick saves <laughs> that I didn't finish the play on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I I never took one off the face or, or anything like that, thank goodness. Yeah, wow. that's good stuff, man. That's one of the scariest things being a pitcher. All right, so I have to say this comment here. So we have a Terry Doolin. He says, what up, sexy <laughs> beast? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know if he's talking about me or you, Christian. Uh, he ain't talking about me. Hey, he likes the, hey, he likes the big man. He's six, uh, I think Terry's like six foot eight himself. Man. He's a large dude. Yeah. You know, I was looking back at our picture, uh, Mr. Doolin, and – uh, you got me beat by a couple inches, I think. Yeah, I mean, and you're, and you're like six, six, right? Yeah, I'm I'm big, but Terry, man. Hey, but we had a conversation at the Dallas National with Terry since he popped into the chat, and he said Shaq makes him look itty bitty, like really <laughs> little. Shaq makes everybody look itty bitty. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he's a big dude. He's bigger now. Yeah, he said he looked like a giant in that pick. But yeah, you did. You did. All right, so I want to know something because I'm not big on baseball anymore, and I figure since you're a pitcher, right, you see things. I feel like you see things maybe differently than I would see things. So I want to know how you feel about Jason Dominguez. Is he – when you have you seen him? Do you think – again? Like, no, I, I've never – I've he was, he was past my time, honestly. I don't – I, I've never seen him play or anything like that. Um, do you scout though? I mean, like when you're buying baseball players, are you scout like because are you like like watching them? Because I know with me in basketball, right? I I, I stalk these players, like and I, I'm just telling you. So people people ask me, like no, literally, no, literally, people ask me what, why why I you know why I pick some of the people I go after to buy, right? And I literally I go to their Instagram page, I see what their work ethic is like, I read articles online. I might watch videos. So I've watched a couple of videos of Jason Dominguez and the guy looks like a monster. And at one point in time, it looks like he was kind of a big monster. And now he's kind of slimmed up and trimmed up a little bit. And I just wanted your take on him. And I know he's only like 17 years old, who probably still, uh, I think he's 17, might be going on 18 this year. So he'll be in the league within the next year or so. But he's I don't know, is he a buy or is he like a dump I, right now? How do you I, feel about him? I don't know. I think his prices have come down from from their peaks. So I think now would probably be a good time to buy them. Maybe a month ago would have been a little bit even better. But nobody was selling them. Every time we went to these shows, I don't think I saw one in a show. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're so, probably right. I know I think about it. You might be right. People are hoarding them. I had one. I had a BGS 10 silver. Nobody wanted it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't know. No, All right, so- I know I know Jordan's PSA 10 uh, flagship tops, right? They're doing 35, 40 bucks right now. If that dude comes and he hits a home run in four straight games, dude, that car's going to be 200 bucks. Easy. Uh, wow. I, easy. I was, I was you see how to easy a, that happens, too. Yeah, the dude just flicks his wrist. And playing in Minute Maid where the, 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 the porch uh, in, in, right, in left field is, is 300 uh, feet away, That's I mean, awesome. yeah. he just has to flick it yeah. out there and it goes. Wow. 
Like but Terry Doolin says Wander Franco is a better investment. There you go. Oh, Terry. <laughs> oh. Hey, he's trying. He's trying to sell cards too. So he's trying to. Rock my head. <laughs> he goes right by him with Trey Young. He goes Terry. Hey, Jason Dominguez. Jason <laughs> Dominguez. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, hey man, but we always go back to buy what you like, right? So we always go there. Hey, and it. so for me, I buy Jordan. I uh, I have another buddy who loaded up on on Louis Robert. I mean, and that's the one thing that people don't understand is that when whenever new hitters come into the game. Um, a lot of there's not a lot of stats on them, right? Everything's uh, you know cyber metrics, everything's geared up like that, so you know everybody's strengths and weaknesses. But <clears throat> once a pitcher figures them out, once a system because it's more the, the, the system than the pitcher nowadays, but once a system figures out a hitter, it's then up to the hitter to reconfigure and reinvent yeah. himself yeah. to come back around. So you saw Lewis Robert come out to a flashy hot start, but then the league figured him out. It's probably mm-hmm. the same way with the NFL when they figure out a rookie quarterback and so forth. Yep. Um, you know, what is your what is your interpretation? Because you live that life. You know, when your your coaching staff came to you and said, Hey, don't throw him that 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 inside uh, uh sinker in the inside, that's his pitch, right? But you're like, man, that's my best pitch. So if I'm gonna <laughs> right. come after a guy, I'm gonna come after him with my best stuff. I mean, so what yeah, did you the, do with that information? That's what you have to do. Like it, it, if you're pitching you have to do what your game plan is first, what your what your strengths are. If they prove that they can hit your strengths on a routine basis, then you have to start looking at what their weaknesses are. And, you know, for hitters, it's – they everybody has a hole. Yeah. Every single hitter has some kind of a hole. Even Mike Trout, he doesn't like the high pitch. Everybody yeah. knows it. And but as a pitcher, how good you are as a pitcher to, is factored by how often you can hit their weakness or pitch to their weakness and execute it. Because I guarantee you, everybody's trying to throw Mike Trout a high fastball, but it's the one that you leave belt high that he does. He makes you pay for it, mm-hmm. and that's the one people remember. So, from a pitching <laughs> standpoint, five hundred feet in the stand, <laughs> exactly, you get whiplash. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's. From a pitching standpoint, you, you're pitching to your strengths 90% of the time. It's the guys who just, I mean, eat you alive, eat your strength alive. Who good at like for me, if you were good at hitting a slider, then you know I was I was kind of like I'm just hoping to get you out on the first couple of pitches. Like I'm not trying to get you out. <laughs> I just want you to get yourself out. But then you had guys who had the big long swings that I loved it. I was yeah, like inside basketball. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. get them out. Fastball, lone away slider. It was like clockwork. I'll tell you. It's I think I, I think I had a long swing, man. I haven't played baseball since high school. Golly, I was okay. <laughs> I had a scholarship to to West Virginia, man. I, I didn't take it though. I, I, I had a scholarship. Ooh, who, who hit the longest home run ever off of you? <laughs> <laughs> I had. A I came from our buddy Derry. I had a couple. Um. Did what make you go, wow, God, Lee? <laughs> oh, so, okay. I, this is a good story, actually. So I was in, I was with the Orioles, and we were playing, um, uh, off the top of my head, it's the Mets double A team. Um, Binghamton? Just, Binghamton. That's what it is. Um, but Pete Alonzo was playing on the on oh, the team. Wow. And there. So I came in, I was relieving, and – there's we were up by uh two runs and i was pitching there were two outs it was like the seventh inning eighth inning two outs guys on first and second my pitching coach comes out and says hey if you walk him it's not a big deal the next guy you've you've owned him we're good so if you walk him it's okay even if we get bases loaded, it's okay we'll be fine he was like just don't hang any breaking balls because he'll make you pay so i was like all right so the pitching coach looked at our catcher who was standing there and he was like, so what are we going to do for his pitch? I was like, well, I want to get ahead of him with a breaking ball and then we can kind of work from there. So what did I do that first pitch? Oh, Hung a nice yeah. little cookie slider right down the middle. He, <laughs> that ball, I don't think got more than 10 feet off the, off the field and it hit the batter's eye and oh, wow. he hit it. And he, he did a little like sprint, like he sprinted around the bases. I hate that. 
Like, <laughs> if I'm, if I'm pitching, like, because that's basically that. I feel like that's worse showing me up than like if you just take your stroll and whatever. But the guy who just he hit it, put his head down, put his back down, and just started running. I'm like, golly. But that that ball was that was a different sound off the bat. And then <laughs> when he when he goes up into the big leagues and hits 52, I was like, all right, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> no on two way, no on two way. Yeah. No on two way, man. I sold all my two way. No, no out two way. Wow, that's crazy, man. So I'm, I'm about to start buying Korea though. Gotta all right, so it. super cheap. All right, so do you do you get into buying football at all? No, we we talked about basketball. We talked about baseball. You buy you buy football at all? You know, I I think the safest bet for me. I don't really buy a lot of football, but I I've gotten into the whole uh, idea of buying quarterbacks. So um, mm -hmm. I just bought a bunch of Mahomes uh, optic rookies. Of she did. Yeah, I had to. Um, but facts. I don't really have. I have a couple of Josh Allen. You don't have I, to put that up. I got lucky. Yeah, they are. Hey, <laughs> you, know, you don't have to put thing, that up, though. But yes. Old, uh, Anthony Hockey brought that up. So. <laughs> hey, man. So let me, let me ask you a question because I was going to say something. I, I'm I'm fine with that, man. I mean, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, they they still got to. They still made it pretty deep in the playoffs with with a big cloud over their system. So kudos with that. They didn't have the races in the bullpen. So, I mean, they still went out and took care of business. So, whether they were banging on trash cans, I can't say that you, they were doing that this season, but they showed that they were pretty legit. So, for me, I mean, that goes kudos to them. But I was going to ask you about something before he brought up football. Uh, you're a pitcher. You said that you could tell him what you were throwing. What did you feel about Granky telegraphing what he was throwing uh, during died. his outings? I died laughing <laughs> so much. <laughs> And that's so. There's there's a story about him um, with the Royals, and when he first uh, signed, you know, like he he's just a little bit different. Like yeah, he's a little quirky. Yeah, and but he does not have a filter on what he says. So mm. there was a story, and it was um, a Royals coach uh, told this to me, a, a pitching coach, and um, the first year he was drafted, he was in big league camp. And he went out and was playing catch. Well, nobody um, asked him to play catch with them. So a veteran guy came over and said, hey, you want to play catch? He was like, sure. So um, he went out there. They were playing catch. And the veteran guy started was like, all right, I'm going to throw. I'm going to spin a couple sliders to you. I want to just let me know how they are, like how they look and stuff. Well, apparently he, the guy, the veteran guy threw one and he goes, hey, how was that? And Granky was like, it's it was horrible. And. The veteran guy was like, huh? And he goes, yeah, did you hear me? It was really bad. Like, just flat out, not joking at all, just laid it all out there. And wow. I thought that was I, – I heard that story, and apparently there was, like, a, a book more of those kind of stories. He's just yeah, – dude, I mean, dude's legit, man. I mean, that's yeah, the epitome of, of the culture in Houston, though. It's just like now, right, with a, with a huge black eye that it put, it, it put its own self in, right? Now mm -hmm. it's just like, you know what? We're going to go out there and still show that we can do it. And you see Granky. Granky, look, that to me was just like, I'm going to come with my best stuff. You know it's coming. And see, I think that that's what he was trying to tell everybody. Being a big league ball player and being a big league hitter, you still got to hit the ball. Even if you know what's coming, you still got to hit yep. it. Like, yeah, that's for me. It's a, it's a shame that Barry Bonds isn't in the Hall of Fame for me, right? One of the best hitters to ever grace the game. Agreed. You know, he had the steroid issues later on, but that dude was a monster hitting the ball. Just a monster. Uh, you don't hit 330 in the league, you know, consistently year after year and not be a good hitter. Like, it's just, it's, yeah. it's unheard of. But it helps. It helps get him off the park, though. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Add another extra 40 feet every every swing. That, that, that doesn't hurt. <laughs> Wow. So basketball, man, who are you buying in basketball right now? Uh, just uh, Darius yeah. Garland and Sexton. I mean, those are the – Sexland. Sexland, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, those those guys, I um, – I honestly, though, I've been getting into more of like the – the uh, whatever you call it, the, the main cards, like the select courtside rookies. Okay. Um, Prism Silver, like – 
anything that I can get in at like a pretty low, low price, like that's what I'm kind of going for and just hoping somebody hits. I mean, somebody's going to have a good stretch at some point and it's just about having the right cards when they do. Yes, correct. That's correct. You got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Hey, Christian, got a question, man. Do you have any of your cards? If so, it would be cool to show Daniel Tillo and Matt Strom, our other baseball players that collect in the hobby is dope. Yeah, he actually said he had his rainbow already. Um, I want to see the super fractor. Is it is it close? Yeah, no? fracture? Can we no, see the super fractor? I have it on my house. I actually have uh, I have a couple of my cards out in the other room. We, we we try to get promote people to, to show cards on the show, man. You can't just be talking about cards and not showing any cards, right, man. God, right, leave, right. man. Give me, give me, God, leave, me, man. Me oh, man, you're, you're making him go. Hey, oh, look at you. Hey, what is hey, your new pickup? What's your new pickup, Rafael? Uh, <laughs> Rafael, All right, so uh, I haven't picked up anything. Have I picked up anything? Yeah, I picked up something. Uh, my favorite card... Is it over here? It might not even be over here. I'll just show this one. Uh, my boys, the Hawks are getting their butt whooped right now. But Cam Reddish, Cam Reddish, one on one Nike patch. It's one of my, my new cards. I'm in love with. There you go, black label. Is that a black label? Yeah, bro. Wow. You know who that is? It's Christian Benford. You don't know who that is? <laughs> yeah, there's that one. And gosh, yeah. and you have. And you have the high grades too. Oh yeah. So I have like every one on one that I that have has been made of me. <laughs> I mean, I so did, did you have to fight for any of them? I mean, how does that whole process work? I had to fight <laughs> fight for the people digging in dollar boxes, sure. Uh, hey, so, but, but I'm but I'm saying though, like if you one on ones, of course they bring premiums. They're not going to show up in dollar boxes, but. Did you ever show up and like, hey, how much is that Christian Benford in your showcase? I mean, do you have a any stories times. like that? A couple of times. I I dug dug through boxes and, and had a handful of my own cards and bought them. And they give you that like, hmm, <laughs> you look familiar. <laughs> but there's, there's a guy in the hobby who is a, a, a royal super collector who um, he hooked me up with all of my cards. And we've That's had so a dope we've had a phenomenal relationship. You know, I, he has a really cool son. Um, so I've, I've, you know, sent him gloves, and what, whatever. Um, but he's, every time he came across one of my cards, um, he bought it and they're even all these came from him actually. Um, wow. So he just a phenomenal guy really. And honestly, a lot of, there are a lot of card guys who are just like, when you play, you hate card guys. You hate them <laughs> because they're there all the time asking for autographs. And I mean, they're, they're just vultures. That's what you call them. Like, it's just annoying. But wow. For the record, the guys, guys, just so you know, we're vultures. But <laughs> it's so, but there's different, like, the people who okay. follow you around and that kind of stuff. It's just like, just cool it a little bit. Right. But, Terry was the type of guy who like he just wanted to talk and just talk right. about the Royals and he was super cool and nice. you know he obviously I gave him autographs but he also hooked me up with you know cards and um and we were friends on Facebook in these card groups and um he helped me That's out right too, so. I, I met nice. I met you through through Terry at the show yeah but yeah I didn't even know it's like yeah he played this baseball is playing, man Jordan. Oh. What's that? Oh, Jordan, baby. That's what oh. I'm getting. I'm getting like, and I'm doing update. What is your What is your opinion on update versus series one, series two? I honestly, I don't really Didn't have an opinion. <laughs> update sells. People like update. Whatever yeah. they sell for, man. Hey, I got the blacks and, and whatever makes sense. And camos. And I'm buying, I'm buying right. as many as I can come up. The the Eloys though, like I don't like the update because it's the rookie debut one, so you gotta go for the tops. But, um, but yeah. All right, guys. So we got about ten more minutes on, well, about nine more minutes on the show, um, and we have a couple people still here live. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask us or Christian. Um, feel free to shoot at us. You know, um, any questions you guys may have, or if you want to talk about something particular. What is 
What is your most memorable strikeout? I mean, uh, yeah, we talked about longest home run. Terry was a jerk for oh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's what true. is your most memorable strikeout? I know playing sports, playing baseball growing up, it was always like, I got to strike this guy out. And you bring your best stuff. And, I mean, what is your most memorable one, man? I, I struck out Mike Trout, which was really cool. <laughs> I, I faced, yeah, we, yeah, we faced – I was in a – it was in spring training game. Um, and, um, our, I forget, um, uh, our starter didn't go past the second inning and I was the second pitcher that was supposed to come in and he was supposed to go five innings. Well, in spring training after five innings, all the starters leave. So, and they, the, the rookies come in to play the rest of the game. So I was just a, supposed to face a bunch of guys who I pretty much already faced in the minor leagues. Well, he didn't get out of the second inning. And so I came in. I had no clue where we were in the lineup or anything. <laughs> the first guy who came up was Eric Ibar, and then it was David Freeze, Trout, Pujols. Those were wow. the four, yeah. first four guys I faced. And um, it was the first guy, Ibar grounded out, um, Freeze popped up, and then um, – oh, no, Freeze got a single, sorry. And then I struck Trout out <laughs> on a 3-2 – Front door slider. It was awesome. I was really happy with myself. Nice. Um, and then, uh, and then pool holes. I threw a, an inside fastball and I, I shattered his bat, which was freaking awesome. Uh, <laughs> but he got a single. So um, yeah, that dude's a that dude's a man. Y'all gonna say? Y'all gonna say? Is underrated. He's underrated. Man. Yeah, he's de- he's underrated. Can, I don't know if you can say Pujols is underrated, man. That dude, man. <laughs> like to me, like. You know, you have your Trouts. You, you to me, you have your Griffies. You have your 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 Barry Bonds, and you have them guys. But to me, once Albert Pujols eventually retires, you know, he's still hitting home runs. He's still getting on base. But once he retires, man, he's gonna go pretty high in the in my rankings as far as one of the greatest to ever play the game. His rookies are already getting a little boost. About time yeah. they did. Dude's yep. a monster, man. So Huey Freeman said, uh, Huey the Freeman, (laughs) what would you guys guess be on a Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow to a PSA 10 prism grade? Haven't seen any on eBay yet. Oh, as a PSA 10. I have no clue. They're going to be so low low pop. I've seen so many prism cards. The corners, the centering. It's just just poor quality. But, I mean, I don't know if they do that intentionally. 700? 700? Wow. Six or oh, seven hundred. The pop is going to be low on PSA ten. So the first ones that are going to pop is going to be six seven hundred easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Burrow probably That's be around five hundred. Two will probably be around four hundred. Yeah, I mean Herbert's probably, only going to be that high because he's going to probably win Rookie of the Year. But yeah, of course, Rookie Burrow, of the Year. Burrow's going to be. I think I, I think Burrow's going to be okay. Um, but I mean Herbert, like I said, I can see him doing seven eight hundred. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Burrow is a hold. Um, I think Justin Herbert. I think Justin Herbert. They add another wide receiver next year, man. I think they'll be looking for somebody. If they bring in somebody else for him, he's going to be dangerous next year. I think he has a great second year too. I mean, it seems like he's going to be the real deal. So, um, I'll probably be back into football by then. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a red wave auto that I just sent to PSA, and I have a a red shimmer auto of Burrow that got pulled from FOTL. So. Um, of course, once it comes back and hopefully it gets a 10, but everything's been nining, I think, in prison. So we'll see what man. it grades, man. Man, corner P- issues, have, man, lots of corner issues. How you been doing on grading, Christian? You've been great. You've been grading a whole lot lately. Everything's just in limbo, man. I have, I have so many things out right now, but it is what it is. Everybody's in the same boat. So I got, I got, I got one of my orders back and I was, uh, what, 27%. Oh. Damn, but you, but oh, you, that hurts. He he submits he submits a lot of stuff, man. Right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is like, hey, I hey, submit Raphael. everything. What do you mean? I submit everything. I'm like, hey, Raphael, this is gonna two. It's all right, man. Hey, I'm gonna submit <laughs> ten of the same card. I might show that one some love. Hey, he's gonna get a four. Nah, it's okay. Hey, well, it just so happened one time he submitted like a card that she got an eight and he got a ten, and from then on he's like, you know what? I'm gonna submit everything. Hey, you know I've heard I've heard a lot of different stories and people like like all right that bowl bowl PSA ten. I told Melly 
uh, Melly Pops in the PSD 10. He was like, how the heck did it PSD 10? I'm like, I don't know. I just graded it. <laughs> I just sent it in. So I got lucky. <laughs> well, Chris, I really appreciate you being on the show, man. I really appreciate your input. Um, maybe, you know, if you have time in the future, I'd love to bring you on for a baseball special. We did a baseball. We had a basketball special. I don't know too many athletes in the baseball realm, but I'd love to get your take. And I, hopefully I'll, I have a lot more knowledge by then about what's going on in the baseball field. I literally went in 2011. I was studying baseball the way I was on basketball. I wasn't even doing basketball on baseball. So I had a lot of Mike Trout too. So I was selling Mike Trout Bowman's best like uh rookie for like 60 bucks when they were cheap. And I and now I was going and I was going after Bryce Harper. So that was who I wanted because Bryce Harper was higher than Mike Trout back then. Yeah. And then I was big on Jackie Bradley. I was big on Frank uh Frank uh was it Lindor and um Man, I was in uh, what was the other pitcher I used to love back in the day? He went to Virginia, uh, with Garrett Cole. It was not Garrett Cole was in the USA Colton? Olympic team. No, it was a, a pitcher from Virginia. He went to the University of Virginia. Uh, yeah, it was Holson exactly. Mm -hmm. he, he he pitched a crazy game in the world in a college against College World Series, and then he Springer came. Springer was to, in that. <clears throat> Springer was George, in that class too. Correct. Yep. And I, it's been a while since I really like paid attention to what's going on, but I like <laughs> I was reading every day, watching the uh, fighters and see what's going on. So I probably watched you a couple of times, I'm sure. But um, yeah, I like Acuna yeah. too, though, man. Uh, but I think it, people might have missed the window. Uh, you see Soto blowing up, man. Wow. I mean, his cars are really starting to go through the roof. Yeah. And then I think Tatis might be right behind them as well. Yeah, All right. This is finally getting that so bumped. All right, so maybe we should try something new since the first episode of the year. Since it's the last question of the night, let's make it something cool. What, 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 what you want to do? Um, buy of the week. Do something different. Buy right, of the week. Buy, buy of the week, all right. Let's do that. What's the buy of the week? What card? Week? Yep, what card? One person. Hmm. Jordan. Jordan? Any sport? Jordan? That's what you're saying? Jordan? Gee, watch hey you hear it here what what it, it's seven it's 756 758 on july 6th that dude is going to be the best buy you're going to see off season and what is he what buy. does he cost right now what does he cost right now tell the people dude, what he costs right now you can pick up a psa 10 top series one for 35 dollars right now mm. watch. 200 dollars car in the future second week into the season i bet you it's 200 bucks Okay, so I'll, 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 you know what? For sake of that gamble, I'm gonna buy ten of them for three hundred bucks and throw them in the, in the back and just say, "Houston sucks." White Sox world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're throwing you now, Chris. Hey, I, honestly, you know, it's either him or Vlad. I mean, both of those guys were cheap at the end of last year. They just had mediocre uh, years for different reasons, but. Um, I, I think either of them, if they if both of them come out hot, I think those cards skyrocket. Vlad, you can get it's yeah, I, mean, I like him little, too. They're a little they're a little more New York on, but not by much. What's PSA ten right now? I I want to say they're close, like ninety bucks, hundred bucks. Ninety bucks. So I, I can buy three, 50, 60 uh, bucks. So I can buy are three Yordan. Are, are they down that? So there you go. So I mean, double. they're they're kind of in the same boat. So. Hmm. And what does Acuna cost PSA 10 right now? I know you guys have been talking about it. What did it they're cost? One, they're 190. They're up yeah, to 190. So they're right back. But two up weeks there. ago, you, yeah, the two weeks ago, you could have picked them up for like 80, 90 bucks. Mm -hmm. mm. So you made double your money. So just so you okay. know, but in a be week. Four or 500 bucks. Watch. So yeah. there you go. So I want to buy 10 of those then. Pay for me a car. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. <laughs> <laughs> Another one, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, no, it was just so you guys know. I appreciate it, and also, you know what hey, I forgot? You, you, you forgot your buy of the week. What you talking about? I didn't hear your buy of the week. I didn't have this. I didn't have to say it, did I? Oh, Trey Young again, right? For like eighteen weeks oh. straight. I mean, this is like a this is like a I'm number gonna... one single, like a Drake number one single. No, I will say this though. Um, and I know it's not baseball. I, I did kind of want to follow suit, but I really haven't followed baseball to really say what's a good buy right now. But I will say that I think Jama Rant while he's injured is a buy. I don't uh I think it's I think his PSA 10 is around 600 bucks right now. He was leaning towards Ooh. I think I think this year. Don't be surprised if John Morant surpasses Zion. 
Hey, well, did the I, monster, man. I think what he was doing, what he was starting to do at the beginning of this year was really good. That 40 point game, and he was literally on a he was about to explode. So I think that yeah. don't be surprised if uh I think him right now buying him at six hundred bucks, I think it can be a thousand dollar cards in the next couple months once he comes back. So I think that you know, I know it's a little bit more of expensive of expensive buy, but I think it's uh definitely a great buy. You got your your BGS ten choice prism card. So nice. What you holding your hand now? It's another it's another Morant. It's actually one of my favorite Morants that I own. Oh, it's not that much. But it so, went from so like hundred bucks. It went from hundred bucks to like six hundred in like a so week. All right, so I'm gonna show my I'm gonna show my John Morant just because you showing a John Morant and let's see. I don't want to see it. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna get off now, man. Why do you have oh, to show, on, show on, me up? Hold on, no, I'm not I'm not even gonna show that card. I'm not gonna show that card. I'm gonna show the epic card, which is the dunk. I that card actually. I love it wasn't that, a dunk. that sick. So it's it's a pop one BGS 10. There's only one. I, I like this card a lot. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try to black label. It'd be dope if I can black label it. So I'm going to shoot my shot on it. But you know the one thing I forgot to do? And we're going to we're gonna do this on the way out. And Christian, I know you can say bye to the folks. You know what I forgot to do, uh, Cooper Collector? Yes, you do, man. You know what I forgot to do? What you forget to do, man? Everybody say goodbye to Christian. Bye, Christian. We appreciate you. Yeah. And on that note, you know what I forgot to do? You still don't know? That's that's really bad. Christian, we usually start off the show like this. And on that note, good night. You didn't remember. <laughs> How did you even forget? <laughs> you we forget. Out, baby. That's it. You have one job. You had one job. <laughs> one job. One job. God, baby, we out. Hey, we got to go, man. No, hey, I know. Peace out. I know, I know. everybody, man. Thanks for joining in. Click subscribe. Hit the little dingy ding. Hit the button. I know, man. Join in next we week. We tried. Yep, we got the hoodies on the website. Give me like.